They say speed is everything, but in the laser world, speed usually means wobble. Well, not today. This is the Agmar P3, and it's running a Core XY system, which is the kind of tech you usually find in high-end 3D printers. Me being the guy that I am, I learn by doing, and I've been putting this machine through its paces to see if it is a workshop workhorse or just a fancy box. We're going to take a deep dive because there's a lot to unpack here that most surface level reviews tend to miss. If you're buying your first enclosed machine or upgrading from an open frame or lower power diode, I'm going to show you what actually matters. Before we get into the nuts and bolts, I want to be 100% transparent. Akmar sent me this P3 unit, the 48 watt and the two-in-one modules and a batch of materials to test. I agreed to review this unit because it offers a totally different way of doing things like this Core XY system that I haven't seen in other machines. But to be clear, I'm not being paid by Akmar. They don't get to approve these videos and my thoughts are my own. I'm running these reviews in my office because I have much better lighting and I have an easier time accessing all parts of the unit from every angle. Also, a lot of you guys are indoors in shared spaces. I mentioned this to Acmer and they sent the air purifier so I could test it indoors. I thought that was pretty cool of them. The unboxing was a bit of a workout and what I mean by that, perhaps being a bit too dramatic calling it a workout, is that peeling off that wrapping plastic took a long time. I actually had to lift some of those screws on the top and on the side of the lid so that I could get that wrapping plastic out. I appreciate how well they package everything. It is all super tight and clean, but the wrapping plastic was a bit of a test. Pro tip, use an electric screwdriver. My Bosch saved me and actually made the whole process a little more fun. Hey, I'm a simple guy here. Once all the plastic was removed, the build felt pretty sturdy, really solid. The cables inside the unit are all very well managed. Same thing with the hoses. I think they did a really good job there. It is all measured just right. Nothing gets in the way. You will find the USB and the power port right at the front, which I like as I often use my laptop and I want a quick plug and play. The air assist also plugs in the front. See, I would rather have the switches for the light and the fan right there instead of the plugs for the air assist. Just saying, it's not a big deal as I often want the lights and the fan to run all the time. I will not find myself going for those switches often enough, but still. One thing I really appreciate while I'm actually working is the physical layout on the front. You got this big red emergency stop and the physical key lock on the power button right there in the front. I actually use the key quite often. It is a peace of mind since I got a little one coming in and out of the office and I don't want anyone accidentally firing this thing up. The stop button does feel a little bit plasticky or generic compared to the heavy metal frame but it works exactly when you need it and as you need it. The P3 is built around the Core XY motion system, that is the mechanical heart. Most lasers use a gantry that shakes at high speeds. The Core XY uses two stationary motors and a cross belt layout to keep the moving parts light. It is rated for 800 millimeters a second, which is about 48,000 millimeters per minute. In my test, the camera operator actually had a hard time following that 48 watt module, but the machine states dead calm, ensuring you get precision even when you're flying. One little nerd warning that will save you from misery. When people share settings online, confirm the units they're using. Some people and software use millimeters per second, while others use millimeters per minute. Copying the number without copying the unit is how projects fail. The workspace is 400 by 390 millimeters. You will hear 400 by 400 online sometimes, but the usable Y is effectively 390 millimeters because the module takes space. The pullout tray is not a gimmick. If you have a big sheet like 40 by 40 centimeters, you slide it in without twisting and fighting the enclosure. It is a huge win for my workflow. I can just slide it out, swap my material, and slide it back without reaching into the mouth of the machine. The honeycomb itself is a bit light, but it does the job. The magnets that come with it, they work, but the holders of these magnets, well, not bueno. This is the real story of the P3. Being able to switch these modules actually work. Swapping these modules is tool-free and it takes seconds. 
you can go from a 2 watt IR engraver to a 48 watt cutter without buying a second machine. Then there is the 2 in 1 head. For me, this is the breakthrough module. It has a 10 watt blue diode and a 2 watt infrared laser. All in one module. You flip a mechanical switch on the head. Blue is for wood and typical diode materials. Red is for metal marking. Remember, the IR module is for marking, not cutting metal. And just like the diode, it will not see clear glass or clear acrylic. The 48 watt is a monster. Full time on beast mode. This module is for production, definitely. It blasts through material like no other machine that I have seen. Perhaps I should not say that the 48 watt is on beast mode all the time because in reality, the 48 watt module with a single flip of a switch again can be toggled down to a 24 watt for a smaller spot size. For example, when you need higher resolution engraving detail. Again, use the 48 watt for power and throughput, switch down to the 24 watt for higher resolution engraving. I did notice that both modules I tested sit a bit close to the material. I wonder how they would work when engraving inside a recess like a tray. I wonder how they will handle the etch without the head hitting it. From my unofficial measuring of things, the max height for material I will feel comfortable working with is that of about 3.5 centimeters. That seems like a safe height to avoid contact with the lid and to keep the module secure. It also keeps the cables and hoses out of the way and stress-free. I'm doing this review in my office, so safety and fumes are non-negotiable. The exhaust fan is very strong, I think it's rated for 4,000 RPMs, and the air pump is rated at 30 liters per minute, so you're not relying on wishful thinking for smoke control. If I was venting out, I don't think I would need to run out and buy an inline exhaust fan right away. Okay, I would because I'm like that, but it doesn't have to be your first purchase after buying the laser. The air purifier, again, is a must indoors. The Acmer P3 is rated as a class one enclosed unit. For all intent and purposes, it means it's eye safe. Still, I would recommend you wear your eye protection at all times, or at least when the machine is running. Goggles are included with this unit, but they don't have any safety ratings in them, so I would suggest you get yourself a pair of laser rated goggles. Don't neglect your eye safety. Also worth mentioning, earlier versions of the P3 reportedly had a vent opening near the lid sides that raised some concerns with light leaking there. The unit I received does not have those openings, which looks like Acmer listened and revised it. One thing I found myself using quite often was the auto pause. See, the P3 has this auto pause when you open the lid. Then it resumes right away when you close it. That is a big deal for me. It actually works very well. Just watch out because you might get some fumes to come out if you don't time it well. Now, the part that nobody wants to talk about, smell and noise. With the laser, the exhaust running, the air assist, and the filtration system all running together, it gets a little loud. That matches my experience with enclosed setups in general. Still, I wear ear protection anyway, I like to listen to music, and I can also close the office doors so I don't bother anyone. Smoke and smell can still leak sometimes, especially if the lid or the tray door are not fully closed. The air purifier works, but it's not odorless. I don't think any air purifier can promise an odorless environment 100%. One thing to point out was that after about six hours or so, the filter cover got dirty and the unit started to beep. I removed the lid from the air purifier and I noticed that this foam cover uh, was pretty dirty. I took it to the garage and I blew that dirt out with my air compressor. It cleaned pretty easily. That dirt buildup seemed to be concentrated right in the middle of that foam by that air intake, right in the middle. The actual filter seemed to be pretty clean. The air purifier unit has this timer. And one thing I noticed is that uh, when I set it up for only a couple of minutes just to test, when the time was reached, the machine stopped. Well, when that happened, I could smell the engraving right away, which is a pretty good sign the air purifier is actually working. Another thing that I really like is this camera, which is a very, very nice to have, especially for batch work. Calibration and light burn takes about 20 minutes between calibration, alignment, and setup in general. 
That is a software reality, not an ACMA issue. You'll have to do that with every machine if you're using Lightburn. Keep in mind, accuracy of this camera changes with the material height. So don't rely 100% on it and do a lot of framing before you run your job. Also, if you're swapping the module, you will have to redo the alignment. You don't have to do the recalibration all the time, but the realignment is a must. Besides the USB connection, the P3 also supports this TF card for offline engraving and Wi-Fi through the Acmer app, which is handy if you want to avoid babysitting a laptop cable in a tight space. In my case, I'm running Lightburn, and the P3 also supports Laser GRBL. The included USB has drivers, software, test files, images, video instructions, documentation, the whole starter kit. You will need to use it when setting up Lightburn because it has all the files for each module. Accessories matter. If you want tumblers, a rotary is a must. And the P3 supports the Acmer M4 rotary module. There's also an automatic feeder option that can expand work up to 4,000 millimeters for long projects. From my notes, the pricing today is very, very good. Acmer tends to run frequent deals with bundles and materials, so check current offers when you're shopping. You might save some money. What I genuinely like about the P3 is how easy it is to live with right out of the box. It is plug and play, and it has a ton of space for your material. And the whole modular idea is not just marketing because you can swap modules in seconds with no tools. That versatility is the real magic for me. I can go from engraving metal to cutting wood with a simple switch. And the platform is clearly built to grow with you since there are four modules available. The 48 watt module has a seriously impressive speed and power for thick stock. And I love that I can flip a switch and run it as a 24 watt module when I want more detail in engraving. As I said, pricing is also a strong point and it helps that the air assist and the honeycomb are included when a lot of machines charge extra for both. On the day-to-day -day usability side, cable management is clean, the ports are right where you want them, near the front, the machine feels solid with barely noticeable rocking even at high speeds. Visibility is excellent from multiple angles and the tray drawer is a genuine quality of life win. The camera is also really good and it makes batching jobs much easier. The unit is light enough that moving it around is not a huge ordeal. And the air assist itself feels robust and metallic. Plus I like I can stash the magnetic clamps right on it. Finally, the air purifier is a must for an office or share indoor space, and it actually works. And overall, the design feels thoughtful. The color looks futuristic and elegant at the same time, and the whole package feels surprisingly refined for a workshop tool. If you're coming from an open frame laser, the Acmar P3 will have this premium feel to it, from the unboxing experience to running jobs. What needs improvement? Now, none of this is deal breaker territory, but a few things are worth knowing so your expectations are calibrated. Focusing is manual with the side needle. And since the bed can give a tiny bit under pressure, you want to be deliberate with your touch. And I still keep an eye on the module clamp bolt before long runs. The honeycomb is not locked down like a reference plate, so it can shift. I would not measure from it. And while the magnetic hold down system works, the pin holders can pull out easier than I would like. Interior lighting gets the job done, but it is dim compared to other machines. On the filtration unit, the knobs are a bit too stiff, and I did notice dirt building up in the middle of the foam cover. So I'm still watching to see if that is just the way it works, or if it is a design quirk, they could improve. All right, finally, what you want to know. Who is this for? Buy the Acmer P3 if you want an enclosed platform that can grow with you, especially if IR metal marking matters and you want the option to jump to serious cutting with the 48 watt laser module later. You can mark metal today and cut production level wood tomorrow just by swapping ahead. Skip it if you want a push button luxury appliance where you never touch a focus lever or align a camera. For me, the core XY stability and the IR diode versatility make this a permanent fixture in my shop. If you want a workshop tool that is modular, fast, and handles both wood and metal, this is the best engineer platform for the price. It is not an appliance, it is a tool for makers who learn by doing. As always, I have put links to the sales and the materials below. Now tell me in the comments, would you start with the 48 watt beast or the 2-in-1 versatility?
And what about that pullout trade? Is that a game changer or a gimmick? Thanks for watching. This is Severna Builds. Now let's go make something.